among versus between, bring versus take, can versus may, fewer versus less, lay versus lie. Oh, hi there. Good afternoon. Welcome back to the class, everybody. This is Teacher Jerry, a Java for English with Jerry Java. For those who haven't subscribed to my channel yet, English with Jerry Java, please do. Thank you. We will be talking about confusing words, words that you are always using in conversations, in your compositions. You thought there's nothing wrong with those words, but actually they are not interchangeable. There's a rule for that as to when to use this word over this word. Let's start with a very simple a versus an. You use a before words that begin with a consonant sound. Not letters, but sound. Then we use an before words that begin with a vowel sound. Again, sounds, not letters. Examples we have there. A poem, a house, a yacht, a union, a one-track mind. An apple, an icicle, an honor, an umbrella, an only child. Adapt versus adopt. Adapt means to change, to meet new requirements, or to adjust, to modify. Adopt means to accept and take as one's own. Example, I can adapt to new surroundings easily. I think that dog has adopted you. Advice with a C versus advised with an S. Advice, an opinion offered as a guidance. It's a noun. Okay, whereas advice with an S, so that it is a verb that means to give an advice or to counsel, to give your opinion or suggestion. Why should I advise you when you never accept my advice? Affect versus effect. Affect is a verb that means to cause a change in or to influence the emotions of, whereas effect as a noun effect means result as a verb it means to bring about or to accomplish the mayor's policies have affected every city agency the mayor's policies have had a positive effect on every city agency let's talk about already versus already already means completely ready like everyone Everything is ready. Whereas already is an adverb that means before or by this time or prior to this. Okay, example the band was all ready to play its last number, but the fans were already leaving the stadium. All right versus all right. The spelling all right, that's one word, is not acceptable in formal writing use all right are you all right are you okay are you fine don't worry everything will be all right a lot a lot and a lot a lot that's uh, two words a space a lot should always be written as two words so there's no a lot as in a l o t as one word so that's an x already it means a large number or amount the verb a lot, A L L O T, means to assign or to set aside or to distribute. A lot of snow fell last night. The legislature will allot funds for a new capital. Now let's talk about among versus between. In general, use among to show a relationship in which more than two persons or things are considered as a group. 
the committee will distribute the used clothing among the poor families in the community. In general, use between to show a relationship involving two persons or things. Mr. and Mrs. Ito live halfway between Seattle and Portland. Amount versus number. Amount and number, they both refer to quantity. Use amount for things that can't be counted. Whereas on the other way around, use number for things that can be counted. Fort Knox contains a vast amount of gold. Gold, you can count one gold from the other, so you weigh them. Fort Knox contains a large number of gold bars. Now, in this way, we are still talking about gold, but this gold is in unit of bars. So you can count one gold bar from the other. So we use number. Let's talk about a while versus a while. Use a while after a preposition. Use a while as an adverb. Example, she read for a while. She read a while. Bad versus badly. Bad is an adjective. Use it before nouns and after linking verbs to modify the subject. Badly is an adverb. Use it to modify action verbs or action words. She had a bad fall. The team performed badly in the first half. Beside versus besides. Beside means at the side of or next to, adjacent to. Besides means in addition to. Examples. Katrina sat beside her brother at the table. Besides yogurt and fruit, the lunchroom serves muffins and bagels. Let's have borrow versus lend. Borrow means to take something with the understanding that it will be returned. Lend means to give something with the understanding it will be returned. Borrow lend lend borrow may i borrow your bicycle for an hour will you lend me five dollars now let's talk of bring versus take bring means to carry from a distant place to a closer one from there to here that's bring take on the other hand means to carry from a nearby place to a more distant one. Take from here to there. That's take. Bring that here. Take this there. Will you bring me some perfume when you return from Paris? Remember to take your passport when you go to Europe. Can versus may. Can indicates ability whereas may expresses permission or possibility. I can tie six kinds of knots. You may be excused, said dad. May I go out? Do not say, can I go out? You can always go out, but when you would want to show respect to the teacher there, to some authorities, use may. May I go out? Can't hardly can't scarcely, can't barely. These phrases are considered double negatives. Ink, ink. Don't use hardly or scarcely or barely with not or the contraction nt. Okay? Because hardly, scarcely, barely are already negatives. So then you add the word can't or not. So that's actually double negative now. So it does just use hardly or scarcely or barely. I can hardly lift this box. The driver can scarcely see through the thick fog. I can barely hear you from here. The compliment versus compliment. As a noun, compliment means something that completes. As a verb, it means to complete. As a noun, compliment means a flattering remark as a verb, it means to praise. 
This flowered scarf will be the perfect complement for your outfit. Phyllis received many compliments on her speech. Compose versus comprise. Compose means to make up. Comprise means to include. Example, the mayor, the superintendent of schools, and the police chief compose the committee. The committee comprises the mayor, the superintendent of schools, and the police chief. Compose, comprise, discover versus invent. Discover means to come upon something for the first time. Invent means to produce something original. Example, Marie Curie discovered radium. Ellie Whitney invented the cotton gin. Emigrate versus immigrate. Use emigrate to mean to leave one country and to go to another to live. Use immigrate to mean to come to a country to settle there. Use the preposition from with emigrate. Use to or into with immigrate. Carl immigrated from Germany. He immigrated to the United States. So from Germany to United States. Immigrate, immigrate. Now let's talk about farther versus farther. Use farther in referring to physical distance. Use farther in all other situations. San Antonio is farther south than Dallas. We have nothing farther to discuss. Let's talk about fewer versus less. Use a fewer with nouns that can be counted. Use less with nouns that can't be counted. Less may also be used with numbers that are considered as a single amount or single quantities. There are fewer students in my math class than in my physics class. You can count your students, so you use a few words. I used less sugar than the recipe recommended. Since you cannot count sugar, so you use less. Good versus well. Good is an adjective. Well is an adverb. Use good before nouns and after linking verbs to modify the subject. Well is an adverb. Use it to modify action verbs. Well may also be an adjective meaning in good health. You look good in that costume. Joby plays the piano well. Hanged versus hung. Use hanged when you mean put to death by hanging. Use hung in all other instances. This state hanged three convicts between 1900 and 1950. We hung Yoko's painting over the fireplace. Healthful versus healthy. Healthful means favorable to one's health. Like this is good for your health or wholesome. Healthy means in good health. You are not sickly. You are very strong. Okay. We chose healthful picnic foods. What are these healthful picnic foods? These are whole grain breads, juices, cheese, and fresh fruits. A healthy person is likely to live longer than an unhealthy one. Healthful to things, to food, whereas healthy for person. Irregardless versus regardless. Use regardless. Both the prefix er and the suffix less, they are negative meanings. Therefore, irregardless is a double negative, which is not correct. It's incorrect. So, irregardless, that's not considered as a word in English. I guess that was just last year, 2020. I came across a, an article in English that irregardless has made it to the English words list not considered a an English word Wow it's without an apostrophe versus it's with an apostrophe before it's it's is the possessive form of it it's is a contraction of it is or it has 
Example, the dishwasher has finished its cycle. It's raining again, meaning it is raining again. It's been a pleasure to meet you, Mrs. Donatello. But it has been a pleasure. So, last versus latest. When you are speaking or writing of an author and say, this is her latest book, you're understood to mean that she has written some other books and that this is the most recent one. If, however, you had said this is her last book, she has written many books and then probably this is the last book that she will ever write. In her last poem, my sister explained why she is giving up writing poetry forever. In her latest poem, my sister explained a family incident that happened only last weekend. Later versus latter. Later is the comparative form of late. So you have late, later, latest. Latter means the second of two. The former is the first one being mentioned, whereas the latter is the second one being mentioned. Okay? They will arrive on a later flight. Both Scott and Sabrina are running for class president. I'm voting for the latter. So you have there Scott, Sabrina, two persons are running for class president. The former, the first one being mentioned is Scott. The second one being mentioned is Sabrina. So former is Scott, latter is Sabrina. So I am voting for the latter and the latter means Sabrina. Lay versus lie. Lay means to put or to place. Forms of lay are usually followed by a direct object. Lie, on the other hand, means to rest or recline or to be positioned. Forms of lie are never followed by a direct object. Lay your coat on the bed. Lie down for a few minutes. Lose versus lose. The adjective lose means free, not firmly attached, or not fitting tightly. The verb lose means to misplace or to fail to win. Don't lose that lose button on your shirt. If we lose this game, we'll be out of the tournament. Past versus past. Past is a past form and the past participle of the verb past. Past, P-A-S-T, can be an adjective, a preposition, an adverb, or a noun. Let's have these examples. We passed your house on the way to school. The past week has been a busy one for me. Quiet versus quiet. The adjective quiet means silent or motionless. The adverb quite means very or completely. Be careful where to put your E. Quiet. Q U I E T E comes before T. Quiet. Q U I T E. E comes after T. Please be quiet so I can think. We were quite sorry to lose her. Race versus rise. Race means the cause to move upward. It can also mean to breed or grow and to bring up. Rise means to move upward. Forms of rise are never followed by a direct object. Raise your hand if you know the answer. Steam rises from boiling water. That which who? That may refer to people or things which refers to things only who refers only to people the poet that wrote leaves of grass is walled with men the new play which closed after a week received poor reviews students who do well on the test will receive scholarships there versus there versus there their, T-H-E-I-R, is a possessive form of they. Their means in or at that place. Their is a contraction of they are. A hurricane damaged their house. Put your books there. 
They're our next door neighbors. Two, two, two. Two means in the direction of. It is also part of the infinitive form of a verb. Two means very or also or so. Two means more than one. The number that comes after one. Jalila walks to school. The soup is too salty. We have two kittens. Who versus whom? Who is a nominative case? Use it for subjects and predicate nominatives. Whom is the objective case? Use it for direct objects, indirect objects, and objects of prepositions. Example, who is that woman with the red umbrella? Whom did you see at the mall? Whose versus whose? Whose is a contraction of who is or who has. Whose is a possessive form of who. Who's conducting the orchestra? Whose umbrella is this? Your versus your. Your, Y-O-U-R, is the possessive form of you. Your, W-O-U, apostrophe R-E, is a contraction of you are. Your arguments are convincing. You're doing a fine job. Bored versus boring. Bored is an adjective used when someone is uninterested or uninspired by a person or event. Boring, on the other hand, it is also an adjective used to describe the object or person that makes us feel uninterested or uninspired. The thing that costs us to be bored. I am bored by that movie. That movie is boring. So that's it class. Thank you so much. I hope you learned from those confusing words and make sure that by the next time you use them, you'd be correct. So this has been Teacher Jerry, a Java for English with Jerry Java. So subscribe to my channel. Bye bye bye.